Hi, Mike Aben here with another KSP tutorial. What we're going to be looking at in this episode is we're going to be looking at launching ourselves into different inclinations. Uh, so we're going to do first of all a simple example going into a polar orbit and then we'll take a look at something that perhaps is a little bit more challenging. In the accompanying Let's Do the Math video, we'll then take a look at how can we calculate the delta V requirements for launching ourselves into different inclinations. Okay, so why don't we get started? We'll go into the VAB and we'll talk about our first mission here. And uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of missions with Kerbal, so I'm gonna do something a little bit different. What I want to do, there it is, I want to create, uh, I want to launch a mapping satellite, specifically one that's gonna map ore for me around Kerbal. That seems like a simple thing to do. And uh, mapping satellites, it's always best to put them into polar orbits, though honestly for this one, it really actually doesn't matter, but I don't know. I'm going to put it into a polar orbit anyway. Uh, and we can see here, here there's a minimum altitude and a maximum altitude. Minimum altitude is 200 and, oh, it's only 25 kilometers. Oh, I thought that said 250 kilometers. 25 kilometers? Whatever. Okay. We're going to put it into uh, an orbit of 300 kilometers. So we're going to shoot for a polar orbit, circular orbit, 300 kilometers, and here is the vehicle I got. It's my Kerbin Ore Mapper. Where is it? There we are. Load this up. Okay, so let's take a look at our Kerbin Ore Mapper. We'll start by uh, just taking away the launch vehicle. Whoops. Actually, let's take away the. There we go. There's our little mapper. Uh, there's our scanner there. It's really, really very simple. It's just a scanner. I always like, I'm a big fan of simple rockets. I got an antenna here for a bit of communication, a whole stack of batteries for when it falls into the night side. There's actually a formula I'll do in a future video, a future let's do the math, where you can calculate how much time you can expect to spend in nighttime for any particular orbit. And that'll help you calculate how many batteries you need. Uh, but I'm not going to take a look at that today. We have some solar panels, obviously, for generating power. The only fuel is right here. It's this little Oscar B, and you can see here that I've taken out most of the fuel here. And because I kept the mass all down, I'm only propelling it with a single ant engine. This little ant engine, where is it here? A whopping, come on, really? There we go. Two kilonewtons of thrust, but it gives a nice ISP and obviously it's mass. It's only 200 kilograms. Tiny little engine. Keeping things small is a great thing. Okay. Uh, all told, this thing then uh, has enough delta V. Remember in previous videos, we took a look at how you can use the engineer's report to take a look at the mass. And uh, from that, you take a look at the mass with it, with the fuel all in and then mass with the fuel out, and then with the uh, ISP from the engine, and you can calculate the delta V of this thing. All this thing needs to do is to actually do the circularization part at the top of the orbit, so it does not need a lot of delta V. And then we'll add on here our launcher. Come on, get back. There we go. You can see I've got a fairing up here. I always like with the fairings. I don't know. I'm a big fan of the clamshell deploy. Uh, I stepped up the ejection force a little bit so that the fairing pieces will actually get away. Um, I what else did I do here? I turned off the intercept the interstage nodes because there's only one thing in there. Not not much else I did. Um, again, you can calculate the delta V for this whole launcher by taking a look at the total mass, taking a look at the fuel mass and taking a look at the ISP of the engine. In this case, I have a Reliant engine. And uh, with that, you can calculate the Delta V of this whole vehicle. Anyway, with that done, let's do it. What we're gonna do is if we wanna go into a polar orbit, look at map view, we want our final orbit to be 90 degrees to the equator, up, down, you have your choice. You can go north or you can go south. Personally, I don't know why, I always prefer to go north. So, we want to lock, put on SAS, we're going to go to full thrust, and yeah, that's good enough. Let's launch. As far as your ascent profile, you use the normal sort of ascent profile, so I'm going to pitch over about 5 degrees or so. 
there we go, I'm gonna lick that off. And what I want you to take note of is that my heading, notice I'm a little bit west of north. So I'm following a little bit quickly, let's... I'm actually not following the north line, I'm following... This is the best of a sense here, here we go. Following, I pitched over a little bit too quickly, that's okay, can recover a bit. But uh, I'm staying a little bit to the west of north. You don't want to go straight. And, whoa, come back. Get back on the west side of north. There we are. You don't want to go straight north because remember that you're already moving towards the east. There, that's pretty good. Um, you're already moving towards the east. So uh, you've got to sort of pull that prograde vector towards the north vector. So that means you've got to actually um, go a little bit to the west of north. You keep track of it by going into orbit mode. There's our actual prograde vector. I want to pull that over to the north side. I'm actually progressing pretty good, I think. The SAS back on, lock ourselves onto prograde. Go into map view, take a look at our apoapsis because of course we're going to cut this. Actually, we're going to cut this at 300 kilometers. There's our progress here, though. Be a little careful, jumps over like that. Oh, that's pretty good now. Stop that on the prograde. Prograde. There we are. There, we're pretty much on the north line now. Okay, we're going to watch this. Again, we're going to stop when our apoapsis gets to 300 kilometers. And... Got it. Okay, a little bit more. There we go. All right. So there we are. We have our nice, well, not in orbit yet. We are still suborbital, but pretty much going straight north. Okay. Let's get out to here. Okay, we are high enough in the atmosphere. We can ditch our fairing. Okay, and I attach the solar panels. Oops, here we go. Solar panels and the communication antenna to an action group. So we'll deploy them with that. But right now, well, we got to time warp our way up to Apoapsis here. And. Here's our periapsis. I'm going to put this at about 50 kilometers. That's good. Ah, that's good enough. Okay. So, we're going to come back to here. We're going to stage. You can see it is very close to being empty. Ooh, I timed that very well. Stage that. Engage our little ant engine. We're going to finish off our orbit by simply pushing this up to... 300 kilometers with our little ant engine. That's good enough. Whoop, there we go. Close enough. All right. We can deploy our little scanner here. Boink, like that. And here we are in a nice polar orbit. Um, if you really want to get these solar panels nicely aligned, here's how you do it. Stay on the north-south line on the nav ball. This is the north-south line here. And just adjust it until you are your ship the central axis of your ship is parallel to the sort of galaxy the clouds here that are behind here because that is that has an inclination of zero where exactly this is going to be on the nav ball depends upon what your latitude is above curve and we are obviously just about to be over the north pole yeah we are and then you turn this way rotate this so that they are straight north-south, the solar panels I mean, and now these solar panels, no matter what, will always get 100% exposure, well as long as we don't drift into the night side of Kerbin, of course. Alright, let's go back to the Space Center. Alright, so that was easy, a nice stable orbit. Uh, oh, let's go to the sunrise, I didn't realize it was going to be dark. For our next launch and so for our next launch what we will do is we will step this up a little bit all right so here we have our nice mapping satellite but what i'm interested here this is our stepped up difficulty let's actually turn off the mapping satellite so it doesn't confuse us 
Oh, Bob's gotten himself stuck again. He is in this eccentric orbit with, let's select them, a periapsis of 100 kilometers, an apoapsis of 900 kilometers. Not only is it eccentric, it's majorly inclined. Actually, not only is it inclined, it is retrograde inclination. We are going backwards around. I thought I would make this as tricky as I could think of how, well, actually, no, I can make it more tricky than this. But I thought this would be a nice way to sort of test our inclination. In fact, specifically, this is going into an inclined orbit of 135 degrees is his inclination. What we want to do is we want to rendezvous with Bob. So let's meet the vehicle that we're going to use to do this. This is the Rescue 3. Ah, uh, you've seen me do rescue vehicles. This is actually very much the same as other rescue vehicles you have seen me do. Uh, except for the fact that I made the booster nice and big. I wanted to make it a single stage booster. Um, but I also wanted to give it enough delta V that I could actually launch into any inclination that I want. This has quite a lot of delta V in it. Well, let's do this thing. All right, so we'll get ourselves to map view because we want to get into this orbit. Oh, wow, look at that. We are already very, very close. We want to time warp. And again, this is kind of similar. Remember when I went to Minmus? You can use the moon as an indication of what an inclination of zero is. And then you can t tilt your camera until you got the orbit of Bob there. Oh, center it on Kerbin. Let's try this again. Oh, that's pretty good. And that means that we want to launch when we are right underneath Bob here. And one thing to notice is which way Bob is going. He is coming, he is going this way. He's going to be coming towards the north as he comes around. So we're going to want to launch in that direction. North and west. I know here it looks like, but that's like from behind, right? Yeah. Get ourselves right under there, get to here, there, throttle up, and launch. So again, we want to launch north and west, that's at about 315, about that direction there. Again, I'm going a little bit past the 315. Same idea as before, you need to you need to pull that prograde vector from west over this way. And we're going to put ourselves into a 100 by 100 kilometer orbit for now. 100 kilometers because that... That is the orbit... Uh, that's the periapsis of the orbit that Bob's in. Again, I'm falling over, letting myself fall over a little bit too quickly. That's okay. Lots and lots of delta V in this thing. All right, let's get back on prograde. Right. Let's check to see how our... Oh, here we are. Oh, we're coming really close. Okay. Start actually coming back this way. ourselves on orbit, Put ourselves in the prograde vector, that's really close, let's see how our apoapsis is doing, again we're going to stop at 100 kilometers, a little more this way, uh -oh, a little bit fast past it, that's okay. And if you look, eh, not bad. A little bit off, but not bad. All right. So, next step is to ride this up and circularize. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. That's good enough. Page. Prograde, and let's finish off our circularization. Closer.
Good enough. All right. Okay, we want to rendezvous with Bob, so let's select him as a target. And uh, we're going to want to do our rendezvous here near Periapsis. See how well we did with our inclination difference. Oh, that's Apoapsis. Where's our ascending? Oh, there it is. There's our ascending. 1.3 degrees. Eh, that's all right, I suppose. Okay, so what we want to do is, again, create a phasing orbit so that we'll come around once and then meet Bob here at Periapsis. So we're going to start by giving ourselves some prograde. We're watching. And we'll get as close as we can. Though, because our orbits are a little, this is a bit of a more complicated situation. We might not be able to get as close as we normally want to. That's 3.8 kilometers. Let's see if I can adjust this just a No, I think that's as close as we're going to get. Yeah. All right. No worries. Okay. So that burn is in 27 minutes. So let's get around to that. Okay. What's that? I don't know where it is. Whoops. A uh, little covert cooked it. Four kilometers. That's okay. So, we're going to make an adjustment to this. And the best place to make our adjustment, because part of the issue why we are off, is because our inclination is off a little bit. So, the place to fix that is going to be at either the ascending or the descending node. You pick the one that's furthest away from Kerbin right here, our ascending node. So, going to add a maneuver right there. And. We gotta play with the normal anti-normal. What happens if we go? Whoops! I lost my. Let's see which what happened. Oh, that makes it closer. 1.1 kilometer seems to be as close as we're going to get. Okay, so let's uh, warp to there. There we go, close enough. 1.1 kilometers, we can do it from here. So, let's now warp to there, and we should be noticing that we should be meeting up right with Bob. Here comes Bob. Good enough. Let's take a look at where the Kerbal Space Center is again. And there it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait until the Kerbal Space Center is pretty close, reasonably close to being underneath our periapsis here. So I'm going to keep track of which way I'm going this time. Whenever you're getting into these really inclined orbits, that's easy to forget. So time warping. Okay, so here's the Kerbal Space Center coming up here. I think at our next go around, I'm gonna try and see, I'm gonna try and reduce my periapsis, try and see if we can not put ourselves down near the Kerbal Space, at least into the ocean area around here somewhere. That's what we're gonna shoot for. Get ourselves out near our apoapsis go point ourselves retrograde we're still on target mode <laughs> all right and make sure I'm not gonna drive into Bob when I do this no I or Bob's old capsule Bob of course is with us now all right let's start reducing our periapsis go out there I think that's looking pretty good hopefully that'll put us in around the ocean here let's see how this goes all right let's see where we ended up that's Bob there there's us 
There's the Kerbal Space Center. I'll take that. Not bad. And don't forget about the accompanying Let's Do the Math video. We'll be taking a look at calculating the delta V costs of ascents like the ones you just saw. And with that, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.